Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about how to solve constructive and destructive interference wave problems. This is also called superposition. And so before I get to the problem, what I do want to do is remind you of what we mean by superposition. First of all, waves can be at the same place at the same time. You can have more than one wave be at the same place at the same time, unlike matter or mass, which doesn't do that. You can have, say, a green wave moving to the right, a blue wave moving to the left, and so as a result you have this resultant wave that you see in red here, and sometimes the red wave is larger than the either component wave that makes it up, and sometimes the red wave is smaller than either the component waves that make it up. So when the red wave is larger, the resultant wave is larger, we are talking about constructive interference like we have over here, and that would be when the crests line up and the troughs line up and so on. The crests are going to be additive in terms of the resulting amplitude you're going to see is going to be greater because the component crests are lining up at the same place at the same time, and the resulting troughs are going to be greater as well with the greater amplitude here. Now, if you have the opposite position where you've got a crest lining up with the trough, and they are passing through each other, then you can end up with a situation like this. So temporarily you can have destructive interference and you can also have constructive interference. So that's background for what we need to talk about. I'm going to change the style of this video and do some drawing as we talk through how to apply these ideas in terms of a problem that is rather involved. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, and so let's take a look at a problem and think about how to work through this. There's a green wave on the left and a blue wave on the right. The green wave on the left is moving to the right at one meter a second for three seconds. And the blue wave on the right is moving to the left at one meter a second in the negative direction for three seconds. So if I consider this to be positive, this to be negative, then I'm talking about moving in the negative direction there. So essentially both waves are going to shift over by three units. And what we can do is start to pick points. And we do want to pick points that are going to be logical so we can plot what's going on with the x and y coordinates. So let's talk through that. Let's call this A initial and we'll call this B initial. and We'll call this point over here C initial. After three seconds, where would these points be if these three points on the green wave are going to be shifting to the right three units over? Well, hopefully you can spot that this A initial is going to be on the 4x mark, the 4 meter mark in the x-axis, you could say. And so I'm going to call this A final. I'm going to call this value B final. And I'm going to call this value C final over here. All three points have just shifted over three units or three meters over the three seconds. I could summarize this by writing out the coordinate points over here. I would say A initial is equal to 1, 1, and A final is equal to 4, 1. Hopefully that makes sense. We could say B initial is equal to 1.5, 1.5, and B final is going to be equal to 4.5, 1.5. So notice the amplitude, the y value, doesn't change initially, just based on these green values. They're just shifting over. You can have the green wave be at the same place at the same time as the blue wave. And we'll see that in just a minute, but if we're just thinking about the green wave itself, all it's doing is shifting over. Let's talk about C. So we could say C initial, its coordinates are going to be 2, 2, and C final, its coordinates are going to be 5, 2. Okay, and we need some other points, and we need some other points to be able to land on these points. So let's consider for a moment, like for our first one, it's going to land on 4. For A, A is going to land on 4 in the x-axis. My question is, what do we need? What value over here do we need for, let's call this D. Where does D need to be such that it moves 3 units to the left and it lands on 4? What would be this x value right here? Okay, well, hopefully you can see that this x value is going to be 7 for D initial. Here, we'll call this right here our D initial. And then to land on 4.5, we would need an x value of 7.5. So I'm going to go ahead and put this E initial value, and this F initial value is going to be over here. So we could anticipate, after 3 seconds, 
D initial is going to shift over three units from its current position at seven to begin with and it'll land on four. So I'm going to label D final as being over here. E final is going to be at the same height value or the same Y value, but we will call this E final over here. And you could say F final is going to have a position right here. So we could also list this out in the same spirit of what we did previously. So I'm just going to say D initial is equal to seven comma negative two in terms of the coordinate point here. E initial is equal to 7.5 minus 1.5 and F initial is equal to eight minus one. So those are my X and Y values for those original values. We could say after three seconds, D final ends up being four minus two and E final ends up being 4.5 minus 1.5 and F final ends up being five minus one. All right, so those are our points so far. I'm just gonna clean up a couple things here. Maybe I'll add in parentheses, although that's a little unnecessary. Okay, and now we have set up our original points and our final points. And the key is, notice at positions four and four and a half and five, these are going to interfere with each other. And so we need to think about how that's going to work. Another way of thinking about this is A is landing on four. It's a final position as is D right here. And then B is landing on 4.5 and the X axis is a final position as is E. And C is landing on the final position of five as is F. So just a heads up as to what we're doing here. So we're gonna to start to think about that interference and how that all relates. So let's do that. So we're gonna say, all right, at D, at X equals four, let's say for a final position, Y equals, and let's think about what Y would equal. Well, Y would equal the sum of the amplitudes of the green wave and the blue wave. So at X equals four, we have a positive one plus a negative two. And so what does that value end up being? That value ends up being negative one. And so we're gonna write the coordinate point of four comma negative one. What does that mean? That means our resultant graph must have a point at four negative one. All right, so let's do the next point. So let's say at X equals 4.5, y will equal to some value plus another equals some resultant. So let's see what that is. So we said B ends up at 4.5 for its final position. Its amplitude for the green is going to be 1.5. And you could say for the blue, its amplitude is negative 1.5. Well, if that's the case, what is a positive 1.5 plus a negative 1.5? Well, it turns out to be zero. So therefore, our correct graph must have a coordinate point of 4.5, zero, if you're gonna be doing a problem where you select the correct graph. All right, and then the last and final bits of info we're gonna use at X equals five meters, so to speak. Y is equal to, well, that would be two, and our Y value from blue is gonna turn out to be negative one. So what is a positive two plus a negative one? Well, that's gonna have a value of positive one. So we can summarize this by saying, the third point that our final graph must have on it would be five and a positive one. In any case, that's how you would set up a problem like this. If you had to choose a correct graph, that would be a possible graph or a resultant graph based on these things. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.